Hi, welcome to Wellness. I'm your host, Linda Lonigan, Senior Clinical Nutritionist. I am here to show you the very best your community has to offer in health, fitness, well-being, amazing events, and amazing people. Today, I have the honor of having a lovely woman who has done so much for our community, Carol. Um, hi, Carol. Hi, Christensen. Linda. Carol is the uh, co-founder of Drug Crisis in Your Backyard. Uh, in our backyard, as well as uh, owner to Cafe Realty. Mm -hmm. Thank you yes. so much for oh, being here. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm very honored to be here, Lindsay. Yeah, it's yes. a pleasure for you to be here. Thank you. So um, please tell me, Carol, how did it all begin? Okay, well, drug crisis in our backyard started um, actually seven years ago. My co-founder, Susan Salamone, lost her son to a heroin overdose the end of May, and she wrote an open letter to the Mayor Pack News. The day that I buried my son, my who died on June 9th, will be a year this Sunday, my sister brought over the Mayor Pack news and she said, oh my God, look at this. And we read, the, my husband and I read the uh, letter to the editor and we said, we were angry parents that this happened to our 28-year-old son. And we met with Susan. We said, we have to meet with the Salamone, Susan and Steve Salamone, and we have to do something about what's going on and what happened. What happened to their son? What happened to my son? So we met with Susan and Steve, and we hit it right off, and we're in their kitchen having coffee, and we're talking about the drug epidemic of what's happening that I didn't even know there was a drug epidemic. So... We're sitting around talking, and I said, you know, it's a drug crisis, and somebody said, yeah, and it's right in our backyard. So we said, oh, that's a great name for our organization. So that was um, mid to late June, and we decided to have a seminar and talk to people about what's happening. So we did at the Mayor Pack Library in August, and we didn't know if two people or 20 people were coming, and we had over 200 people stand in room only. So it told us that there is definitely a problem. And Steve Salomon was saying that when his son died, people were just coming up to him and saying, oh, my son has a drug problem. My daughter has a drug problem. And so our purpose is to bring, in the very beginning, was to bring awareness and to stop the stigma. People were embarrassed sure. about this. Sure. and. It, and to show you how people were embarrassed in the very beginning, right. we would go to fairs and have a table at a fair, right. and people would come, first they come and look at our table and see what it was, and once they realized it was about, about addiction and drugs, they would walk right past the table because they were embarrassed. Right. And I understood that because if someone would have said to me prior to this happening to my son, oh, there's going to be a seminar at the high school or a seminar at the library, you know, about drug addiction. I would have said, well, why would I go? My son's a New York City detective. My daughter's a PhD. Like, I, I never had any problems with my children. Yeah. So how did Eric get addicted to drugs? Yeah. Eric hurt his back. He was 28 years old. He made detective in NYPD in less than five years, which is like almost unheard of. He owned a co-op. He had a beautiful girlfriend. He had his whole life ahead of him. He hurt his back. He went to a local doctor, gave him Oxycontin. My son became addicted to that. That happened in January 2011. In November 2011, Eric called me and he said, Mom, he says, I think I have a problem. I think I'm addicted to drugs, to painkillers. And my reaction was, oh, Eric, the doctor gave them to you. You'll be fine. And little did I know that six months later, my son was going to be dead. So Eric was not fine. So with that said, with the loss of a child, um, as no one could really understand unless you did lose a child, you don't want this to happen to anybody else. Sure. So Susan, my husband, and Steve, we were four very angry parents that wanted to bring this out to the public. We went down to Washington, D.C. Susan has been on the governor's task force. I helped the people in uh, heroin, uh, Yorktown Against Heroin. I helped them. And we talk about this, we speak at the schools, we speak at rotaries, we speak at chambers of commerce. Not to be ashamed, find help. So we have our organization, we have a Facebook page, we have a website, drugcrisisinourbackyard.org. Right. We have uh, recovery programs, intervention. 
We have support groups every other Tuesday in the Mayor Pack Library and every other Tuesday in Yorktown Heights and up in Dutchess and Hopewell Junction. So we're here to help everyone. We're here to give information. We're here to give you, to be a resource. Um, we actually, we had a jail program that we had a six week program at the Putnam jail, helping people who were going to be released, you know, what's amazing. next, where do I go? Amazing. It, it is amazing. And I tell you that now people are aware and they're not ashamed to speaking about it because, and what people don't know is the average age is 41. People think that, oh, a drug addict, somebody who's addicted, very interesting. They would think that they right away think of kids. Right. You know, 19, 20, 21, because they are the majority who are dying. Right. However, it's an epidemic. 72,000 people died last year. 72,000 people 72, overdosed from drugs, heroin, and what have you. Right. And that's what happened to my son. My son was in rehab. Yeah. He came home on June 4th from rehab. Right. He, um, I guess he just couldn't handle it. I know on June, on June 8th, he called me and he said, I just can't sleep, mom. I just can't sleep. And I said, all right, honey, I'll come because he lived in White Plains. I'll come down. I'll sit with you while you sleep. I said, you'll be okay. And he says, and then he called me about an hour later. He says, no, I feel fine. You know, I'm, I'm going to go to sleep. So I had to go to a meeting in White Plains and when I left my meeting in White Plains, I passed his co-op and I saw his car there. And I was, I felt relieved. I says, oh, he's home, he's sleeping, I feel good. Sure. Little did I know 12 hours later after 12 p.m. that um, he took heroin and he OD'd. And I guess his body wasn't acclimated to, because he was clean for a month. Right. And then he took the heroin and he OD'd. Right. And he was in, um, I think... They realized that he was, when the police found him, they realized he was a police officer also. And they really worked on him, and the hospital really worked on him. But unfortunately, it was too late, and they didn't have Narcan in those days. And also, drug crisis in our backyard, we also have a Narcan programs that we do with, with the... Unbelievable. Um, yeah, we, we, it, it's incredible. We definitely have helped people. Our goal now is to um, talk about the legalization of marijuana. Mm -hmm. It is something that we don't want because right. it is a gateway drug. Right. Not for everybody, but right. for most people. You right. know, people, young people's brains are not fully formed until they're 25 years old. Yes, I had read that. Yes. I definitely had read that. Mm -hmm. So if you're taking a drug at sure. 16, 18, 20, it's you, you, your brain's not formed and you sure. can't make the right decisions. And that was one of the signs that I saw with my son at, even though at that point I didn't know that he was on drugs at that point on, right. on the painkillers addicted right. to him, he was not making rational decisions. And he was a young man who always made rational decisions. He was smart. He knew what he wanted. He knew he wanted to be a policeman. He, you know, he, he went to a Westchester Community College. He got his associate's degree. From there, he went to CW Post. And uh, while he was there in his third year, he was took the police test. He was called right away and went in and he graduated the top 15% of his class. So he was somebody who was on the fast track. He was funny. He was extremely well liked. He was an athlete in school. He was co-captain of his um, wrestling team in high school. Wow. So it's a tremendous loss. It's it a is. tremendous loss. It is, Carol. And, you know, one of the things that you do lose is you'll always have memories of your child. Right. But you lose the future. Exactly. You lose him getting married. You exactly. lose him having children. You lose him being an uncle to my daughter's Absolutely. children. So that's what you lose. And that's sure where is. the big loss comes from. Sure it is. Yeah, it no, is. sure it is. It is. Do you ever take time to say, wow, look what I did. I mean, every single <sighs> year you get an award. Specifically, I, I bring up the one in 2016, a woman of distinction of New York Senate. Yes. That, I mean, and, and... I mean, do I ever take time to say, did well, I do this? Well, sometimes I'm amazed at what we have done as, as an organization, how many people we have helped. And actually, the very first night in August 2012, 20, um, 2012 when this right. happens, this there was happened. a young man in the audience who said, I need help. Wow. And we helped him that night to get help. Wow. So for, so there it perpetuated itself. Sure. We have, we have many volunteers who help us. This is something you can't do alone. And so Susan has gone on and she's been licensed in many different things. And she is a true, true 
counselor who could truly help people. Sure. And so I am proud to be part of this with Susan Salamone and Steve Salamone sure. and the things that we have accomplished. Uh, it is, it, I'm amazed of the things that we have accomplished and the things that we're going to accomplish. Oh. That, that is down the line, you know, we, we've been very, I've been up to Albany with um, Kevin Sabat talking about uh, mm -hmm. the smart approach to marijuana, mm -hmm. you know, and we're not saying not to decriminalize it, right. but just don't make it legal. Exactly, right. And so we've been doing that. Right. We've been having, um, you know, many different panels. You know, sure. Kevin Sabat was also in Somers, the Somers Against Prevention. Right. They invited him to come. I'm right. on that panel also, besides other panels. And one of the things that I was doing a couple of years ago was down with uh, one of the assemblymen's was with elderly people who are addicted. And you'd be very surprised how many elderly people are addicted. Interesting. And uh, we do the uh, Give Back the Drugs Day. You know, we do that every year at the police stations. And, you know, I'm there with that, um, with uh, Senator Murphy. Amazing. And I'm hoping that Senator Hawkman now will do the same thing, too, with us. So it is, it is... Um, amazing. It is amazing. Thank you. And I have Thank to tell you. you, you continue to be an inspiration. As moms that have lost children, mm. you continue to give me inspiration as well as to share with my audience. Can you tell me one thing to share with my viewers, moms that have lost children? I mean, you continue to put out there, I believe in life that we're here for a reason to help as many as we can and to share whatever we can yes. to help human mankind yes can you share something that if my viewers are tuning in that have lost a child because um you just just it, amaze me carol thank you thank you linda you're pretty amazing yourself so oh, i appreciate no. that coming from you <laughs> very much so it is the only thing i could tell someone who's lost a child is this you're always going to have a hole in your heart it's true and there's always going to be an empty chair at the table it's true so, however, you know, we don't have any control of what took place. We can't control that. What right. we can do is control our actions going forward. We can help other people, depending on the circumstances of the death. Right. Be it be it with drugs, help other people, whatever you could do. Right. You know, be it with, with suicide, help with suicide prevention. Right. You know, even just a sickness, you know, cancer sickness, help sure. other people. Sure. When you help other people, right. you feel better. Sure you do. you do. I have I have a tagline in all of my emails, and it's live by the three E's: energy, enthusiasm, and empathy. Wonderful. And and I try to really truly live by that. Mm -hmm. I have a tremendous amount of energy. I have a tremendous amount of empathy, and uh, I'm always enthused about everything. I'm enthused about people. You certainly are. And I believe that um, there's karma. Yeah. You know, and you give out the good karma. People want to be around you. Sure. And just with that and understanding, and you don't even have to say anything. It could just be a touch on the shoulder. It could sure. just be holding a hand. You don't have to say anything. Just right. being there. And you know, I have um, an acquaintance, actually. She's really not a friend, but she's um, whose daughter committed suicide about two years ago. And every so often, I'll call her or text her and just, you know, how are you doing? I'm here for you. What do you need? And it's so appreciative because people are almost afraid or embarrassed to talk to, to talk to you about the death of your child. Of course they are. And we of want we are. want our children to be known. Right, right. So, well, I have to I have to say, Carol, that you are beautiful inside and out, thank and I want to thank you for who you are and what you do every single day of your life. Thank you. You are Linda. such an inspiration and such strength. You are absolutely amazing, and it was such an honor to have you on my show. Oh, thank you so much. It was an honor to be here, Lindsay. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank, thank you, you very much. Remember, when we eat well, select great foods, and feel better, it's something we want to do for the rest of our life. Remember, moderation and balance is key. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to my wonderful crew. Have a great night. Thank you.